I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data analytics and data engineering. This week, we're gonna go back to our Microsoft Access playlist and we're gonna talk about the mod function and do events, which are two features in Microsoft Access VBA that are very useful for controlling program flow. And so uh, what these are gonna allow you to do is to sort of give your program a break when it's doing something really big, like you know, cycling through a million records or something and uh, stop your machine from showing uh, not responding at the top of the screen or locking up and you can't see what's happening on your Microsoft Access form. And so mod is just a mathematical function that shows the remainder after a certain number is divided into another. And do events is a function that allows uh, Microsoft Access to uh, pass control uh, back to Windows for a moment to process any anything that's sort of sitting outstanding that Microsoft Access is sort of locked up as it's going through and so it allows it to pass the control back to Windows. Uh, Windows can do its thing, update screens and all kinds of things and then come back to Access and process the next chunk. So without further ado, let's look at mod and do events. Okay, so uh we're going to take a look at our access data file that we had uh, from a previous project and uh, this uh, table of cities and countries and subcountries uh, came from GeoNames so I'll credit them as well as uh, give some thanks to Lexman and the Open Knowledge Foundation who helped to put this together and this is a uh, data set with uh, 23,000 rows uh, roughly uh, after I imported it into Microsoft Access. So the next thing we'll do in our, our project here is we're going to create a form. So we'll go to create and then form design. And uh, uh, we can design our form here. And uh, we're gonna, just gonna throw a text box on there. Um, and we'll call our text box, uh, I don't know, progress. Uh, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a loop that's going to loop through those 23,000 rows and do an insert into some other table just to make it slow down just for uh, demonstration purposes and uh, and so we're going to show our progress as our loop goes through um, in our progress text box on this form and so in order to do that we're also going to uh, create a button so we'll drag a button onto our uh, onto our form and we'll call this process records and uh, we can go to our property sheet here and we'll give it a name and we'll call that button uh, CMD process and uh, then we'll give a name to our text box as well and uh, keep in mind this process uh, could be used for anything that you have uh, that has an iterative process to it so it would, doesn't have to be records it could be anything else whether you're cycling through uh, some big collections uh, or doing some other kind of analysis uh, you could uh, certainly uh, create a, an update this way as well but we're going to use a record set today uh, so I'm going to call that form process cities and then <clears throat> what I'm going to do is uh, I'll go to the uh, button here and uh, I'm gonna click the ellipsis beside on click and that's gonna give me my uh, VBA window that I can start coding and I'll go up and expand my uh, object window there just so I can sort of see my form <clears throat> for my process cities and then uh, I'll add a comment on here just saying uh, uh, going to uh, process uh, processes city data and then I can get started uh, so I'll create a few variables for this <clears throat> just to uh, help us go through the loop. So I'll uh, create a database variable and a couple of record set variables. I'm not going to add any uh, uh, error handling or anything to this. Uh, you guys can do that in your own procedures. Um, but uh, what I'll do is I'll set my uh, database uh, variable equal to the current DB that we're working in. And at the end of the procedure, we'll set that to nothing. Uh, and then I'll do uh, the RSTA. I'll set that to our current data uh, database that has a SID table, which is the one I showed you. And then I have an output table called RSTB uh, B, 
and that'll be uh, uh, the uh, geo city table and uh, that's just going to be a recipient table uh, so that we've got some inserts going so that it slows down a bit so we can demonstrate the system kind of locking up. At the end of our procedure we'll throw uh, some close statements on there so we don't leave anything open and then we can uh, uh, add another variable for our account and uh, that's going to <clears throat> increase by one on each iteration of our loop and it's going to help us to demonstrate uh, how this works. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a do loop and we're going to do until rst.eof and that just means end of file so when you get to the end uh, go out of your do loop and uh, we'll add an rsta.move next on there and uh, that's going to uh, give us uh, uh, it's going to move it iterate forward through the uh, record set each time and we'll increment our counter just the same and then uh, what we'll do is we'll say me, because we're coding in the form code right now, uh, we'll say me txt progress is equal to the, the count that we created. And so that, what that's going to do is uh, that's going to display our progress. Uh, what's going to happen there? Uh, we'll take a look and see. Uh, it says we're setting it equal to a number. Um, and then we can uh, go ahead and do our record insert into RSTB uh, just to create some some slowdown there so it's going to perform some action inside of our loop as it goes through 23,000 records and we're going to do an RSTB.add new and an RSTB.update and in between we'll uh, set our our names of our uh, uh, so RSTB city name is going to equal the current record for RSTA name and uh, the RSTB geo ID is equal to the RSTA and that's a geo, geo name ID. And what that's going to do is uh, it's going to do an insert each time it goes around uh, 23,000 times and it's going to increment a counter and uh, uh, that's going to help us to understand what's going on here. And so this should execute when we hit our CMD process button when we click on that and I'll go ahead and I'll save our work here and I'll do one last check uh, oh it looks like I missed uh, RSTA and our do there so we should be looping through our RSTA loop so that looks like a bug there so we'll we'll make sure that's good we'll save that again and then we can go over to our form and we can click process records and see what happens so you can see uh, nothing's happening, uh, but it looks like it's not responding. See up at the top there, so it's a program totally locked up for that whole time that it was working. Um, I had other apps that were uh, running, uh, and it seemed like access just sort of locked up, and it could lock up for a very long time, minutes or longer than that even, if you have a very big process. And nobody likes to see their machine locked up without uh, having any feedback or anything happening. You don't know if it's stuck or whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we can see there the display progress that obviously did not work. And so uh, for our form here, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use the mod function, uh, which divides one into another. So if we will say if our mod can, you know, is a multiple of 100, uh, and with no remainder, uh, then we're going to do some stuff. And what this allows us to do is allows us to break things up. And so we're going to take our update statement for the form and we're going to put that inside the loop every hundred times it goes through. And then we're going to use the do events uh, uh, command. And what that does is uh, it's really great because uh, it allows you to pass control, uh, execution control, back to Windows. Uh, so that uh, windows can do stuff uh, that need to, need to be done like repainting screens or whatever uh, or processing other things and so um, what that, that allows us to do is every hundred times through our procedure uh, do events is going to allow the screen to update and as you can see it's gone ahead and, and updated there you can see it uh, iterating through uh, 23,000 records 
But what if we wanted to uh, not do every 100 rows? We only wanted to show every 1,000 rows because maybe that was too fast or there's too many records. Well, you can just add 1,000 onto your mod uh, statement there, and uh, that will uh, show updates every 1,000. And that sort of helps to to show maybe uh, things that are go too fast or or, if, or that kind of thing. So you can adjust it to how your system works. And then in the next step, well, we kind of also want to show when it gets to the very end because it kind of looks like there's only 23,000 out of 23,018. And so after our loop, the counter has incremented as many times as it can. So we can just set it at that point to the, the total count. And that'll give us uh, our total count after all of the records have been processed it'll show the total amount um, at the end, 20, 23,018 records. And so uh, moving on to the next thing that we can do is we can show how many records there are as we go. So in order to do that with a DAO record set, uh, we need to uh, move to the last record uh, in a, as we've got the record set open and then move back to the start again and once we've done that, um, then it's going to expose the record count um, on our record set. So we can, we can load uh, an integer variable uh, with the count, and then we can use it in our, in our process to show you know, uh, how many have been processed out of how many rows, which kind of gives a little bit more information back to the user. And once we loaded our uh, integer, long integer for rows, we can go ahead and throw that into our uh, txt progress output and we can say uh, the count is of uh, the number of rows and then we can save that and we can go ahead and see what happens when we when we run that on our form i'll clear the output here and we can hit go and as you can see we can increment and then it tells us you know uh, 18,000 of 23,000 and then it ends with our our total amount there and that's how you use mod with do events. I hope you enjoyed our discussion today about mod and do events, and I hope that you can use these uh, uh, features, techniques in your project. Uh, if you like what you saw today, please give this video a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And uh, when you see the bell, click the bell so that you'll be notified of any new content that I put up on the channel. If you have any uh, comments or questions, uh, about what you saw today, please put them in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. And uh, have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.